Okay, I see people trickling in. Thank you everyone who's already on for joining. I'm gonna give everybody a few seconds to join. Um, and obviously we're talking about TikTok. So in true TikTok fashion, we will listen to some tunes while everybody's joining. <laughs> for joining. Um, as by way of quick introduction, I am Riley and I head up our account management team here at Tribe. And I'm Michelle. I lead our client partnership team in EMEA. Um, and today, obviously, we will be talking about all things TikTok. So first, what it is, in case you haven't heard of it yet. Um, what you can expect from the platform, some data and analytics that we've gotten from TikTok themselves, um, who uses it, etc. And then we will be showcasing our top five marketing tips for TikTok. As we'll learn today, TikTok is ever changing and ever evolving. So these tips and tricks are definitely ones to be taken and implemented for your own brand, iterated on, etc. Um, but we hope that you take away some really cool things that other brands have done and what we've seen on in the space so far. Um, and then we will be leaving time for a Q&A at the end. So please, please, please ask away, put your questions in the question box. Am I an influencer yet? <laughs> um, hopefully we have time to get to all of those at the end. Um, and hopefully we answer all of your questions along the way. But of course, if we don't, um, we look forward to answering those at the end. Um, without further ado, I will pass it off to Michelle and we'll dive into all things TikTok. Awesome. Thank you, Riley. Okay. So according to TikTok, the platform has over 560 million global monthly users of whom 77% are under 34, 43% do not use Instagram, and 45% do not use Facebook. This relative lack of overlap with the other channels presents TikTok as a really unique opportunity for marketers to rapidly expand their brand awareness and reach new audiences. And the platform is creating new social content stars almost daily a new community of influencers that brands should turn to not only as potential advocates, but as true experts on creating successful, viral worthy content. To help brands feel equipped to take their new digital marketing territory, we've collected the most important learnings from TikTok. Uh, and in this playbook, we've laid out what works on the platform that can be so highly unpredictable and how brands can successfully implement these takeaways in their strategies. So the basics of TikTok. Before we dive into the deeper strategies, uh, it's important for brands to understand the basics of TikTok content. TikTok content is brief, lighthearted, serendipitous, and entertaining. TikTok's stated mission is to inspire creativity and bring joy to its users, meaning both content creators and the wider audience. The most successful TikTok content is entertaining as a bottom line and uses the platform sounds and various video editing effects to achieve a funny, clever, and heartwarming video. So what are the quick hits on TikTok? First, shorter is actually sweeter. TikTok posts are vertically filmed videos that are up to 60 seconds long, 
but the top performing TikTok content is usually between 11 and 17 seconds. Second, there is no need to complicate things. According to the platform, TikToks created directly in the TikTok app rather than pr produce using other equipment or software and then uploaded back into TikTok generally garner more engagement and traction. Number three, it's all about the sounds. A TikTok video's associated sound is very important. Content creators will often start their video creation with a distinct audio element and build the rest of the content from there. The app's library of sounds varies from popular songs to audio clips from movies to user-generated voiceovers. Four, be creative. A viral TikTok trend often erupts around a certain sound or hashtag on the platform. With each creator using editing and storyline to contribute to their own unique creative take on the trending sound or hashtag. And five, it's okay to let loose a little, show off your lighter side. A common TikTok format is a storyline that builds into some sort of payoff. So many TikToks have surprising and often humorous endings. All right, so Tribe's top five marketing tips. Number one, there is no formula for success on TikTok. The first learning is probably the most important and the most frustrating. On TikTok, virality is impossible to predict. Your post can tick all the boxes above and still fall flat. Alternatively, your throwaway post that took you five minutes could blow up and become the next big trend. While this makes a marketer's job harder, the notion of unpredictability is also key to the app's popularity. Tip number two, adopt a test and learn strategy. A test and learn approach is the way to go with your brand's TikTok strategy. TikTok marketing campaigns should be quick to plan, execute, and evaluate. Because the app's trends move rapidly and it's important that your campaigns align with these trends. Instead of the multi-pronged approach, months-long, higher budget campaigns and your brands must be developing for Instagram, you should view TikTok as a marketing playground. Focus on delivering quick, low budget, creative, and timely campaign ideas. Then implement and figure out what pieces of the campaign's audiences are responding to and build from there. Okay, so we we, we promised some best practices. Um, so our very first brand spotlight will be on ELF. And um, so if you didn't already know, ELF stands for eyes, lips, face. So it makes sense that their initial campaign on TikTok was hashtag eyes, lips, face, um, which had an original song associated with it. Kind of ticks all the boxes for um, TikTok in general, it has a campaign, has a song, perfect. Um, and then, of course, COVID-19 hit. And so what did ELF do? They iterated on their very first hashtag eyes, lip space campaign. So what they did is they had a remix to the original song, and the remix had all of the buzzwords that we started hearing during the initial COVID-19 kind of shelter in place. So proper hand washing techniques, social distancing, etc. And so they, again, saw something that was originally successful for their brand, dug into it a little bit more, uh, leaned into world events, and then iterated on that to make something even more unique and more special and, again, timely. Um, and you can see there on the screen how that panned out for the brand. So 102 influencers participated. It's a little bit small, but um, that says 87.3 million views and then 1.9 million earned media value. Another thing ELF has done on TikTok is they partnered with Chipotle, <laughs> which don't get me wrong, I love makeup and I love Chipotle, but it seems like an interesting partnership. Um, but that's like the beauty of TikTok is you can do some things that are a little out there, a little bit more fun and playful. And obviously that partnership is exactly that. Um, so the CMO over at ELF has been quoted on saying, it's important that you 
take a deep dive into the content that's out there on TikTok, looking at who's engaging with what, what's working, what's not working. And if it's not working, jazz it up a little. If it is working, put out a remix. Um, just kind of do things that you aren't able to do so quickly and so, again, playfully on other apps. And then you can see here, the quote is, have no fear, go out there and see what works, which I think is a perfect kind of all encompassing quote for exactly what ELF has been doing. Awesome. So tip number three, make your TikTok campaigns creative and easily adaptable. One thing that we do know about the TikTok formula is that controlled scripts and strict campaign guidelines and expectations for influencer created content are not the path to virality or success. When developing marketing campaigns and branded content for influencers and consumers to participate in, it's important for your campaign's content idea or theme to really embody the foundational spirit of TikTok trends by being simple and easily adaptable. Leave the control to the creators and rely on the creativity inherent to the platform. Uh, this is what's really going to drive your brand's campaign message forward. Okay, example number two um, is Aerie. So if you don't already know, Aerie centers a lot of its brands and the majority of its campaigns on body and mind positivity. They really lean into that movement. So it makes sense that their hashtag and campaign on TikTok was hashtag Airy Real Positivity. With this one, um, again, with the COVID-19 shelter in place, um, they centered this hashtag in this campaign about not only what makes you positive and keeps you positive, but what keeps you positive when you're stuck at home um, and you know your whole life has been changed and now you're inside. So they partnered with a TikTok powerhouse influencer, Charlie D'Amelio. And then like Michelle mentioned, music, super important on TikTok. So they also have the song 100% Real Love by Pop Up Girl. And you can see how well it's worked out for the brand, 1.8 billion views and counting. And again, this one kind of ticks all the boxes. They've leaned into the idea of positivity, which the brand has already stood for and already spoken about at length in multiple different campaigns. They've made it really timely with, you know, focusing on, okay, we love that you're positive. How can you stay positive during shelter in place or during COVID? Um, they have the powerhouse influencer portion, more eyes on your campaign, obviously, when someone um, that has a lot of reach is talking about it. And then coupled with that song that really resonates and makes sense with the campaign itself. So again, 1.8 billion views is not too shabby. So a lot of success driven from this campaign as well. Tip number four, TikTok influencers are the experts. While this takeaway isn't necessarily unique to TikTok, it is amplified by the app's nascency and quick evolution. TikTok influencers are experts on what works and doesn't on the platform. In building out a TikTok strategy, it's imperative that your brand leans on TikTok creators for their expertise. The content creators you partner with are always striving to entertain their followers and will have the most relevant idea of how you can take your campaign's framework and transform it for their audience. Like influencer marketing across other platforms, your brand's primary role in a campaign is to really empower and support your influencers' creativity and their expertise. Okay, not a new name in terms of pioneering things within the industry, um, Fenty Beauty. So Fenty Beauty um, created the Fenty Beauty House, which was a mansion where TikTok creators were going to come together, um, build relationships, deepen their relationship with the brand itself, and really just take their content to another level. It also, of course, gave them opportunity for more content creation um, and really just 
played up on all of our best practices. Unfortunately, with COVID, which seems to be the common trend in my best practice examples, um, the Fenty Beauty House did take a pause at the beginning of 2020. Um, but Rihanna is, again, a pioneer in the industry, super creative, and always has really great ideas. She's been quoted as saying, I think our generation is the sickest and the most creative. Um, and the quote on the screen is, I can't do it alone. So to join in with the people who are influencing the world and my community and my generation, this is the hub. Um, so taking this tip to heart, um, I'm really excited to see what Rihanna comes up with, whether it be relaunching the Fenty Beauty House um, after we are able to do so, um, or something else that is just as creative because obviously Rihanna herself and the entire Fenty Beauty brand understands that it's super important to give these influencers their own voice and give them opportunity to continue to create content in a way that's authentic to them, authentic to your brand, and just you know spurring that content creation as much as possible. Okay, tip number five. On TikTok, owned and earned media strategies go hand in hand. TikTok as a marketing tool isn't just an opportunity for influencers and consumers to promote and discuss your brand, but also for your brand to show off its lighter side in order to connect with your consumer. On TikTok, a strong owned media strategy will really help to bolster your earned media strategy. Brands that have seen earned success on TikTok are also typically really active on the app in terms of owned content creation. And while we're used to the perfected images and videos that really are excelling on Instagram, on TikTok, the more raw, the more participatory, and the more creative your own content is, um, really is the better. We missed one slide, Michelle. There we go. <laughs> Um, so our example for this one is Benefit, obviously an extremely playful brand, all of their communication campaigns, like really whenever you see Benefit anywhere, it's playful, it has its own voice, it's, you know, very distinct, but with TikTok, you're able to take that even to another level versus something like a curated in-feed Instagram post where it has to be curated, just that. Or on YouTube, when something's a little bit more edited, on TikTok, brands have the opportunity to use their own social channels as a way to play up that voice and show, as Michelle said, a more raw, real version of the brand. Um, so for benefit, the example that we have um, is, again, during COVID-19, I apologize, that is all of my examples, but um, seems very, you know, top of mind for everyone. They had a um, initiative where they showed a Zoom meeting with an, with an internal team meeting, and they had archetypes for each of the people. So examples like the one that's snacking all the time or the loud typer, things that we can probably all um, identify with uh, since a lot of our meetings this one included, are via Zoom now um, more than ever. So they were really able, again, to showcase their playfulness, the raw, real things that make consumers, TikTokers resonate with the brand and see, okay, these are just real people like me and you, um, and grow, allows them to grow that affinity for your brand even more because you're being more realistic. Um, the example that we have on the screen is we see, we see TikTok as a place to create edutainment content that celebrates unedited beauty while not taking ourselves too seriously in the process. And that quote, uh, edutainment, I think is really interesting because of course, as a brand, you want people to know your products. You want people to purchase your products and know what types of things you carry and what to expect from your brand. But on TikTok, you're able to do that in a very playful, fun, exciting way that is 
on that borderline of edu education and entertainment. So a pretty unique vessel for brands to do that from their owned page. Cool. So we know TikTok is pretty nascent in the US. Um, it is marketing's new frontier. Um, and here at Tribe Dynamics, we recently launched in the last couple months TikTok tracking within our software. So if you are a Tribe Dynamics client and you don't have TikTok tracking yet, please reach out. Um, obviously the first thing is to see the content and see what's being talked about, um, about your brand so far. And obviously we're here to help. So reach out if you would like to learn more about that. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for listening. I think we're going to open it up to Q&A now. How do I get my face back on the screen? <laughs> oh, there we go. Perfect. Um, so continue submitting your questions if we didn't cover something that is top of mind for you. It looks like we have a few questions in there right now. Um, the first one is, I'm curious to know what you guys think of fashion brands and what they're doing right or wrong on TikTok. What brand is doing it right right now? I have an example, Michelle, unless you example. want to go first. <laughs> yes. <Okay. laughs> I've been talking about this example but we didn't put it in the presentation but it's perfect um okay so my favorite campaign from a fashion brand on tiktok so far has been levi's i think right out the gate they were a pretty successful and talked about brand on tiktok um but the one that i thought ticked all the boxes was they, so when COVID-19, are you guys sick of hearing me say that term yet? Um, when COVID-19 hit and all brick and mortar stores closed, Levi's needed to figure out a way to drive people to purchase their products when all of the in-person opportunities were no longer there. So they partnered with um, TikTok influencers and those influencers were able to create their own custom denim and then they utilize TikTok's Shop Now feature where those TikTokers followers could purchase for a limited time um, the same denim that their favorite influencers had created, you know, uniquely. So it allowed people to, or it allowed Levi's to drive traffic to their website, something that they needed to accomplish with um, all of, like I said, their brick and mortar stores closing. It also allowed the influencers to have a very curated, specific, unique, personable experience with the brand because they were creating their own jeans, um, something that I know I've never done before and I think would be a cool opportunity regardless. And then third, it let the followers of those TikTokers have something and buy something that was uniquely made by probably their favorite you or not YouTuber, sorry, TikToker, maybe YouTuber also. Um, and so it had a trickle down approach where it benefited the brand and the influencer and their followers, which I think is the perfect best practice. So that is my long winded example of Levi's campaign. Michelle, you want to read another yeah. one? I think we have quite a few in there now. Yeah. Are there any other owned strategies that you can share that have been successful? Yes. One that really comes to mind for me is Lush. They're already just a very lighthearted brand. And I think that that really comes through in their owned content. Something else that they do that I really like is they have TikTok accounts in different markets. So they can really cater to market specific trends, have the same campaigns, but uh, in the relevant language, et cetera. So that is one that I, I think is really successful. Um, going through some of these. Um, how do you figure out which influencers are right for your brand on TikTok? I think this is a super interesting one because 
as we saw on Michelle's, one of Michelle's very first slides, a lot of key TikTokers are not as prominent on other social channels. So it's a very unique opportunity for you to find new people for your brand um, that aren't woven into that web of other social platforms. We would always recommend first and foremost to work with influencers who are already organically talking about your brand. Um, and then the like other opportunities there are, are influencers talking about your competitors? Are they talking about uh, your industry? So if they're already posting about makeup and you're a makeup brand, you can convert them to being a fan of your brand if you have great products. And so I think just, you know, going out there, looking at content, making sure you do your research and you're not just sending out communication to a bunch of influencers who mostly post about Diet Coke and BMWs. I don't know. <laughs> Those are just examples. Um, but make sure, of course, unless you work at Pepsi or something and you want those types of influencers. But I think making sure that the type of content they're already posting would also be beneficial for your brand and it would fit seamlessly into um, the, the type of content that they post naturally. Yeah. I, I think Michelle. another thing to add there is it's it's okay if you if you're just starting, you're really delving into TikTok and you're working with people who you thought would be um, really good for your brand and, and maybe ended up, it, it wasn't that way. It really is a test and learn. So get out there, try, try working with people who you believe will be a fit and just don't give up, keep going, because that is something that we hear from a lot of brands that just, just you'll find out as you go. Any other questions in here that... I'm trying to read them. This is testing my quick reading skills. <laughs> um, and if you guys come up with oh, any Michelle, questions later on, also feel free to email us. Michelle, I think you have an example for um, language, right? The TikTok or the Lush one? Yeah. Yes, Lush has an account in different markets, so they're really, uh, like I mentioned, they're just really catering to their market-specific trends, doing campaigns um, relative to the language so that they can really cater to all markets um, and be a more global brand. Yeah, so that's more owned media, um, but I think ties in nicely to some of these questions in here. Um, okay. Okay, another one. How can a skincare brand show their playful side through TikTok while remaining tasteful and elegant? Um, obviously, you all that work at brands know things really well as well and know your brand's voice and what you're trying to get across to your potential consumers. Um, as we've said in some of these examples, like Benefit, um, Airy, these are pretty like lighthearted, playful, um, tongue in cheek at times type of brands. Um, but there definitely is an opportunity in my opinion for, t for brands that maybe aren't as like in your face playful, um, to show that they're human and that there is, you know, there are people behind the face of the brand and we all have, especially for skincare, like skincare concerns and things that maybe aren't as elegant or aren't as like beautiful and that can really be capitalized on on TikTok. I off the top of my head can't create that campaign for you right now but I think there is definitely a place for brands who maybe are not wanting to you know dance to savage but do want to showcase you know we're human we're all human and um, this is like the behind the scenes of my brand even if it isn't as yeah, playful. I keep saying that word, but yeah. And, and learn from the TikTokers. You should be, if you're a skincare brand and you're looking up skincare hashtags, skincare brands, look at what other in TikTokers are doing and what's working for them. Um, and then kind of play off that, like Riley said, do a little remix. Um, not skincare related, but definitely relevant. Um, like Chipotle, again, as an example, 
um, saw a video going viral about, I think it was like the guac challenge and then really played on that and, and followed suit. And that was really successful for them. So really use the TikTokers um, as the experts because they are. Um, other skincare questions just about best practices. Um, one that's top of mind for me that maybe isn't skincare necessarily, but is um, Isle of Paradise. We wrote, not we, our content team wrote um, something on them not too long ago, but they had a pretty successful TikTok campaign centered around wanting to promote that their uh, self-tanning drops were streak free and how people could put those drops within their moisturizer and obtain the natural glow that they were looking for without streakiness. So they had a whole TikTok campaign centered around just that influencers putting the drops within their moisturizer and putting it on. And so it was kind of that edutainment where it was educating potential consumers that um, this is what this product accomplishes, this is how you use it, but also in a very entertaining way. So that also wasn't, I mean, Michelle, what do you think? I don't think it was like extremely playful. I think it was still a pretty elegant campaign versus more, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Raw yeah. and out, out there <laughs> that some TikTok thought, campaigns can be. Yeah, it really also gave the the consumer a chance to come up with their own way of using it and really educate on there was a like when i was reviewing everything there was a a bunch of different ways that people were going about it so um it, it again could go any direction um but i that's a great example cool okay uh i think maybe one more question yeah. Do you think we have time for one more? Sorry. Uh, okay. I'm going to do, unless you have one that you want to, <laughs> that no, you want to talk through. <laughs> okay. Mine was, and it ties into one of my previous examples, but do you find that including employees on TikTok for personalization resonates well with consumers? Um, so that was in the benefit example where they showcased an internal um, Zoom meeting and really played on different archetypes of their employees. But I think, yes, personally, for, during Shelter in Place, I have loved on TikTok, not on TikTok, anywhere, have loved seeing the more behind the scenes from brands. So seeing like, okay, these are my Zoom, our Zoom meetings or meet this employee and, you know, talking about their the people who make up their brand. I think it's really cool. And so you definitely don't want to go overboard. I think it's still important to showcase the products and what you're looking to sell, but it just makes you a little bit more relatable. And again, allows consumers to see, okay, this brand is just like me. Um, they're human beings. They're, you know, they use these products too, or they have a blemish here, or, you know, they need to fill in their eyebrows every morning as well. Whatever it may be, I think it, it really helps allow, um, yeah, allow consumers to resonate with you. Yeah, and sorry to keep piggybacking off of you, but this also <laughs> reminds me of, of this best practice or learning that, that half of the consumers that are on TikTok are not on Facebook and Instagram and might not be um, have any knowledge of your brand yet. So this is really an opportunity for your brand to reach um, that market and in a, in a way that will resonate with them. So this really is the platform for you to show off your lighter side, your more fun side, um, your more raw side, because that's what the Gen Z wants to see from you. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to add that bit in there as well. Yeah. Okay. I think that's all. Um, but thank you all so much for joining. Hopefully this was helpful. Sorry we didn't get to every question, but I think we touched on some themes within most of them. Of course, reach out to us if directly if you um, have any follow-up questions or feedback or anything like that. Um, but this was super fun and I hope you got a lot out of it. Thanks, guys.